Hi, it's Tuesday, and this is Allegra with your weekly dose of modern life. Healthier, easier, more fun. On today's show, I'm going to talk about trusting your inner voice. Then we're going to have a friendly chat with my friend Kayla Philo, who did what I think everyone <laughs> dreams about at one point or another, sold everything to travel the world. Then I'm going to tell you about a new project that I'm really excited to introduce, which are my online cooking webinars. All this and more after this brief musical interlude. See you after the tunes. We're back. So this past weekend, I went to a workshop for women entrepreneurs, and it was all about making 2018 our best year ever. And when I had posted a photograph from the event, one of our podcast listeners, hi Tracy, asked me to share more about what the event was about. It was, oh my gosh, it was such an amazing event hosted by my friend Kalika Yap, who is an entrepreneur extraordinaire and who I is a recurring guest of mine, and she was featured in episode five, so you can find out more about her there. But Kalika is committed to, her goal is to create one million jobs, and she just really wants to empower all entrepreneurs, but she has a special place in her heart, of course, for women entrepreneurs because she's a woman entrepreneur. I guess that's a natural thing, right? And so the event was partially just a support group. It's a new group that she's founding, but also to talk about this idea of your best year in 2018. And what Kalika does each year is she picks one word that guides her for that year. And so we were led through some exercises in order to help us determine what our word for 2018 would be. And the questions were, what did I gain slash learn in 2017? And the idea is that you want to answer these with short phrases, maybe even just one word. So for instance, in 2017, one of the words I put down was creativity. 2017 was a very creative year for me, and that was great. Um, another phrase that I put down was a vibrant health. I really recommitted to a rigorous exercise routine. I had been a little lackadaisical. Sure, I was still exercising. I was still very healthy. All of my numbers, you know, the medical numbers, they all looked good, but I wasn't quite as vibrantly healthy as I like to be, and I really took it up a notch in 2017. I also gained the benefits of a tribe. I, grew, I joined this wonderful networking educational group that has really become a tribe for me and has been wonderful. So these were things that I gained and learned in 2017. Then the next question is, what will I take into 2018? And I included my health practice and the tribe that I belong to. And then in 2018, what do I want to invite in? So again, one word phrases or two word phrases of what you want to create in 2018. And also in 2018, what do you want to let go of? One of the things I put there is buttons. Um, one of my spiritual teachers, he always says, you know, that person may be pushing your buttons, but they didn't install them. And I always joke, and it's not a funny joke, but I always say, you know, you know why we don't have world peace? Because humans can barely get along with our own family members. <laughs> How can we expect to have world peace if we don't even want to deal with the people who know us best? And so... I wanted to commit to uninstalling some of the buttons that have been installed, you know, years and decades ago. And when, after you do those exercises, you're then asked to come up with one word that encapsulates 2018. And the word I came up with was trust. You know, I'm in, I'm 43 and I really feel like I spent my 20s trying to figure out things that I should have figured out in my teens. And part of being a mom for me is about being committed to recognizing my child's interests and strengths and nurturing those interests and strengths. I feel like there were things about me that it was very obvious that they were my gifts, they were my passions, and they weren't encouraged. And I don't 
you know, I don't blame my parents. They did absolutely the best that they could do, but it was just, it was just a different way. They, a different way of parenting. They said, oh, well, that's not really a stable job or that's not, maybe you should try out something more conventional. And what, what are we teaching children when we teach them that, that, that they should be miserable every day, that that's the best that life has to offer? You know, absolutely, absolutely not. And I, as a parent, just want to nurture my child's interests and passion so that she can then share her gifts with the world. You know, as I said last week, I really believe that the world would be a better place if everyone followed their passion. When I think about an, how engaged our world would be if everyone was doing things that they love, it just gets me excited. And so that's why my word for 2018 is trust. It's just to have absolute trust in myself, in my inner voice, in the direction that I am being guided. Um, I once heard this great saying about raising children. And it was a, an American girl was asking her mother, who, her grandmother, her grandmother, who was born and raised in Africa. The American woman said to her, African grandmother, Grandma, I don't know which parenting book to read. There's so many different philosophies and theories. I'm not sure which one to follow. And the grandmother said to her, don't read the book, read the child. And so I offer that to you. Don't read the books. <laughs> read yourself. Trust yourself. And maybe you have a different word for 2018. Absolutely. Embrace your word. But trust yourself. Next, we're going to have a great interview with my friend Kayla Philo, who did what so many people dream of, sold everything to travel the world. After the tunes. Hello, big wide world. I am here today with Kayla Philo of Yen Caravana. Hi, Kayla. How are you? Hi, Allegra. I'm great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited for everyone to hear your story, Kayla, because your story is just so incredible. So I met Kayla a few years ago, four or five years ago. You actually sought me out because we had both done a productivity course, right, called Insane Productivity, mm -hmm. which someday we'll have to talk about that on the air because I think there was a lot of great stuff in there. But as a woman, there were definitely some things that I felt like didn't <laughs> apply so much. Did you feel that? Yes, Darren Hardy's wonderful, but he's definitely the alpha male coach. <laughs> yeah, which is which is why I part of why I created this podcast was to have a female voice and also a female mom voice because that mm -hmm. was part of you know Darren Hardy has some of these great tips that are in my opinion impossible to implement if you're a primary caregiver. Okay, so <laughs> let's just get that out there. But mm -hmm. so what I love about Kayla. Okay, so Kayla's story is just incredible because Kayla did something that I think many of us fantasize about but don't do, which is she completely downsized her life to everything that can fit into a car. So tell us, tell us about that, Kayla. <laughs> when and why did you do this? Okay, well, about three years ago, uh, I was finishing up the end of a pretty painful divorce, 26 year marriage, and uh, realized I had a lot of deferred dreams and kind of an undernourished career. And I had some work to do on myself at that point, right? And I always had a, this dream of downsizing and traveling more. I can remember years ago being on vacation and going, wow, what would it be like to have a vacation lifestyle? And so that's what I decided to do. <laughs> My youngest daughter went to college and I sold or donated everything that wouldn't fit into my a trusty Honda CRV, and we were talking about you know a three bedroom house at that point, twenty six years worth of stuff. Um, my ex had moved out of the state, so he had taken a few things, but I was there getting rid of lots of you know furniture and dishes and kitchenware and housewares, and that actually was the easy part. It was the sentimental things that were harder, like cards, letters, kids' artwork, mm. um, you know souvenirs from many years of travel, you, you know, wedding presents people give you that you never use, but you can't get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> so what did you yeah. do with those sentimental things? 
Well, the sentimental things, I, um, I saw a tip on a blog post and I wish I could remember which one right now. Cause I would totally give them props, but I can't remember at any rate. Uh, you take pictures of these things. You, you, I sort of made a little ritual around it. I cleared some quiet space and I took things out of box one by one. And I took a picture of it with my phone and then I would uh, upload those pictures to my Google drive. And so where I could actually now find these things that like cards, letters, objects that, you know, I had liked and see them and enjoy the reason why I was attached to them, but not have to pay to have them in a box deteriorating somewhere in some storage space. Right. Um, and then for the stuff, you know, for the paper based things, the cards, letters, and even kids artwork, I did a little ritual where I burned them. And for me, that was a way of, you know, expressing gratitude for the time that that represented, mm-hmm. but making me emotional, but, um, but not having to keep myself attached to that thing. Because to be quite honest, that thing wasn't going to pay my visa bill. It wasn't going to help me with the next phase of my life. It it was just going to be like a weight. Right. So that's how that was what I did. And it's a tip for people out there who are thinking, how could I ever get rid of X, Y, and Z? Well, you could take a picture of it. And then if it has value, you could sell it and put that money into your dream account, which might help you feel better about selling that thing, or if it's sentimental, maybe create a ritual around it and either pass it on or burn it or whatever works for you. So downsizing helped to fund the next stage of your life. Yes, it did. Um, I am fortunate that I do have some skills that I can do online. I'm a video editor and, and, um, that was part of what I was doing for money while I was, when I took off, to travel, I didn't have a lease anymore. And I spent a few months in Montana. And then I spent some time in and out of Mexico City, or Mexico, the country, and also went to Ecuador and Iceland with my daughter. But during that time, I was able to um, not only leverage the funds that I had gotten from selling everything, but also kind of supplement that with some online work. And so how many years ago was this downsizing? It was about three years ago. Mm Mm-hmm. And I continue with the discipline of it. It was a big step for me. We did, um, I have a partner now in Mexico City, a very sweet man, and he's from here. We did actually sign a lease on an apartment a few months ago, and that was a big step for me. And um, But I've continued, it's furnished here. I didn't buy any furniture. And I've continued to hold on to this ideal of having a very flexible, lightweight lifestyle so that I can move locations when I want to. I have plans, you know, to work in Thailand in the future for six months, maybe next year. Um, So it's one of my values is to remain flexible and adventurous while I can. I mean, I'm 54. And quite honestly, you know, I may not want to or be able to do this when I'm in my late 60s or early, even early 60s. Who knows? You just don't know in life. So this was something I felt like I needed to do. And I know that listener, you know, the behind the scenes about your downsizing, there was a lot of psychic weight on, I mean, I, I recall you telling me about, you know, being in the fetal position, you were, you were just so sad prior to Mm -hmm. the deciding to downsize and everything. So, I mean, that was a huge weight off. You, you really shed a lot of skins in that process. And what I think is admirable is that, you know, you continue to put yourself in situations where you are forced to grow and learn, right? You're living in Mexico. You're not from Mexico. You didn't grow up speaking Spanish. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so, So, I I just think that's so admirable because I, I, this wise man once said that life is about learning and that if you don't choose learning situations for yourself, then the universe will conspire to create painful learning situations. He actually called it the cosmic two by four. He said, you'll get hit over the head by the cosmic two by four unless you choose (laughs) to learn. So, you know, you were in a lot of pain and you chose to learn the lesson and you you're continuing to live. You said you had this dream for a long time. And despite the fact that family members and people who love you are telling you, it's time to settle down. You've already been in that painful situation. You were, you were hit over the head by the cosmic two by four. And now instead you're choosing to put yourself in these learning situations, which I think is really admirable. 
Well, thanks for that. And I, I totally agree with the the man that said that to you. And it's um, and I believe it's also very applicable to my audience and perhaps some in your audience too. You know, women in midlife, we um, it's very helpful if we can do the work to lead the change that's happening to us physically, emotionally, spiritually, because, uh, you know, it's not your mama's midlife. This is a whole new game for women right now in their 40s and 50s. And if we don't choose to lead that, we're going to get pulled by it, kicking and screaming. It's going to be ugly. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, And I can speak to that because it was for me. And um, the whole, what I had, part of the reason I had to downsize was, um, I didn't have a terrible life before. And that's, I think, why I stayed with it for so long was I was very comfortable. I mean, my ex-husband is a very nice man. Uh, but it became very clear as we were talking about what we we're going to do when our daughter graduated from high school, we were not on the same page at all. And so when the when everything transpired and, you know, the divorce took place and I had all this stuff, I couldn't separate out what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to, you know, I had to kind of get rid of everything so that I would know what pieces I want to put back into my life mm. from, you know, from that time. And I just, I wasn't, I couldn't do that work sitting, you know, in that place among all the memories and without my daughter and my, and my dog, they, I mean, I didn't even have my dog anymore. So, and besides that, I had a lot of, I had ganas. I had, you know, desire to go and see and do. So I love that, was that part of my expression, motivation. ganas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It, so for people who don't, yeah. for people who don't know in Spanish, when you want to do something, you say yo tengo ganas. And I've I've told English speakers before that there's not a good translation for this in English, you know, because some mm-hmm. people ask me why I don't have a second child. And Mm -hmm. the reality is no tengo ganas, you know, I, and, (laughs) and there's no good way to say that in English. It's just, there's, I guess, urge maybe is the closest thing uh, to it. So anyway, it's, it's something that compels you from within almost. Yeah. Motivation. Um, It's one of those beautiful Spanish words that, you know, Spanish is such a subtle language. Um, it drives, you know, English speakers crazy when they're trying to learn it first. But once you kind of get into it, and it's one of those words, it has multiple meanings, depending on when it's used, who it's saying it, how they're saying it. And it's it's like motivation, urge, compulsion, mm-hmm. you know, what's drawing you exactly. Mm-hmm. So yeah. now you are helping other women live their dreams. Tell us about Yin Caravana. Yeah, thanks for that. Well, Ian Caravana, Caravana, Ian Caravana came out of this experience of traveling solo. And also it's a, it's a combination of my experiences my whole life, advocating for female entrepreneurs, advocating for women in general, women's rights. And um, just, you know, I was a, always have always been pretty clear that those are big values for me. So what we do at Ian Caravana is we create, um, so I am a life, um, I'm a strategist for the female journey. And I'm not a coach, not setting myself as, up as a coach. What a strategist does is she goes out and she finds all the best resources to help her tribe along their journey as efficiently and quickly as possible. And that's what I've been working on. Um, we create experiences to help women achieve their goals and um, the impact that they know that they want to make. But they can't always see clearly how to get there. And that looks like two things. One is the dream biz test drive for women that have a dream biz idea. It helps uh, people who have these ideas or the very early stages of their business, but they don't have a lot of experience. It's, it's like a roadmap, how to get the best information to help you succeed in a world where the failure rate for new businesses is over 50%. So it's a, it's an innovative program, very different from what other things that are out there. Well, and That's one we, of the things we have. Can we talk yeah. about that really quick, mm-hmm. that failure rate? Because uh, I think that, you know, I once did this thing for Amex, a video for Amex about what's my number one tip to entrepreneurs. And it was about dating your business before you marry Mm -hmm. your business. And Mm -hmm. the reason why I said that is that the first business I ever started isn't even on my bio or anything anywhere. Because what I found out after Mm -hmm. I started it was that I didn't enjoy it. So it wasn't that the business Mm -hmm. failed, but it wasn't a good fit for me. And I, you know, ideally, if you can intern for someone or a company or, you know, get some sort of experience so, so that you've tried something so that you know that you like it, 
so I think this dream biz test drive is a great way to date an idea before committing to it because you have to commit to a business for a solid 10 years. And anyway, mm -hmm. you know, I just think failure rate, I think, I yes. feel like the word failure is so harsh. Whereas if, if you try something out and then you realize you don't like it, I wouldn't call that failure. I'd call that, you know, <laughs> trial and error. <laughs> Right, exactly. And but and that's kind of part of the point is you can um this you can take small steps that don't cost a lot of time and money to figure out do I like doing this? Is this an activity that I'm going to want to expand on, spend a lot of time on? Um you can create little tests of your idea to find and talk to actual real people <laughs> who might be a potential customer down the line and say what do you think? There's a lot of information you can get that's um can tell you in six weeks, really, do I want to continue with this or not? And then you don't, and it's all, be, you don't have to accept, register your business. You don't have to spend money on an accountant. You, there's all these things that I call in the business box that you have to spend money on. Yes. To start your business. But 90% of those things you don't have to do right away. Mm -hmm. What you have to do is get clear on why you want to do it. Talk to some potential customers and start to, um, uh, build up your personal network. Now they, uh, so that's a dream biz test drive. Then the, the, um, other thing that's happening at Yin Caravana is, are these mirror, mirror your brilliance circles where it's four to six women coming together to basically mirror each other's brilliance and be accountable to one another through these six month goal programs. I super facilitate those circles with, uh, we bring in guest coaches and supplemental content and all sorts of other goodies I don't really have time to get into. But it comes from my belief from working with some really great coaches, um, which is awesome. But I also believe that 90% of what we need to do to get to where we want to be, we already know. We just need to have other women who understand our position, where we're coming from, to be accountable to and to help them uh, achieve their goals as well. The cool thing about the internet and these programs is it doesn't have to be the woman next door anymore or the woman you go to church with or you know anybody in your community. You can find each other online, and that's what we're doing as well at Yen Caravana is bringing curated groups of women together for these circles. Nice. And so people can find you at Yen Caravana, which is Y-I-N-C-A-R-A-V-A-N-A dot com. And mm -hmm. so just to wrap mm -hmm. it up, Kayla – I know you love the flexibility that you have, all the awesome traveling that you've been doing and everything, but what's the one challenge that you have with your new lifestyle? Because honestly, you make it sound so easy, uh, yes. and I know it sounds easy, right, because, <laughs> because you're on the other side of all that upheaval, but what is still challenging now? I think the challenge, anytime you're going to do something outside your comfort zone and and kind of keep yourself ahead of that, like outside your comfort zone, continue to work on yourself is holding the uncertainty because there's a lot of uncertainty in my life right now. Um, and you know, I'm 54, like I mentioned, and there are messaging saying there's messaging out there saying, you know, I need to be settling down. I need to be doing this and that. And so I just have to continue to check in with myself. I meditate and, you know, realize, no, I'm really happy in this moment with what I'm doing right now. And those answers will come. I mean, I have a 10 year plan for sure. And I know it's already created out there for me. And I think that's the other thing that helps me with that, with that dealing with the uncertainty in the moment is I know where I'm going. I know it's out there. And, um, I just have to kind of keep taking action and keep going and taking baby steps. That's how we, I mean, that's how we start out and that's how we learn. Yes. Well, thank you for that. I think that's great. I, I once heard a tip about, child rearing that was don't read the book read the child and I think that's kind mm -hmm. of like what you're saying you know it's sure these there are these guidelines out there about at 54 you should have done this this that the other thing but that's not necessarily your truth and so I think you know it's it's hard sometimes to turn an eye to what everyone's telling you to do but I also think in a way it's easy because if you, if you doubt yourself, then if you doubt yourself about what you want, you're going to doubt yourself about everything, right? Like, you know what you right. want. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, mm-hmm. I think that's... And that's the step one. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's the step one. You're going to drive yourself mm-hmm. crazy if you're mm-hmm. denying what you know about yourself. So kudos to you. Absolutely. Thank you. For leading the way, yeah. for blazing the mm-hmm. trail, for being a flamethrower, as I like to say, <laughs> someone who spreads her light. And to find out more about Kayla and take mm-hmm. advantage of her wonderful services, visit her at yincaravana.com. Coming up next, my exciting new project that I can't wait to share with you. So for those of you who follow me online and follow my Instagram or my Facebook or or on my newsletter even, you know that food is a big part of my life and my mission because I really believe that cooking from scratch is one of the best ways that you can increase your health, wealth, and yes, your happiness. And a little bit just about my background, I became really passionate about cooking when I was about seven years old because at that time, my family, my parents were defrauded out of a debilitating amount of money. And my mother was just not able to get out of bed for, I don't remember how long it was. I guess, I don't know. Last time I asked, my mom didn't remember how long either. But it was long enough that my father asked me to help with food in the house. And I had a, so I was seven, my brother was four, and my sister was two. And so I would make, you know, nothing fancy, cold cereal for breakfast, you know, maybe a cheese sandwich for lunch. But for dinner, I would make the one thing that I knew how to cook at the time, which was sliced hot dogs with scrambled eggs. (laughs) And it's still one of my favorite meals. It makes my mouth water actually just thinking about it, especially those grass-fed hot dogs. They're amazing. But I just remember being so proud that I could contribute to my family in that way. And I guess for me, it forms such a powerful connection with food that it's still my favorite way to you know, nurture my family, to show them that I love them and care about them and want to keep them healthy. And you know, in terms of how it can increase your health, wealth, and happiness, there's an Ayurvedic saying that with good food, medicine is not needed. With bad food, medicine won't help. You know, the only way to really know what you're eating is to cook it yourself. In terms of wealth, you know, I've run the numbers. I don't know if you've ever looked at your numbers, but for a family of three, it costs us about $800 in groceries for a month. And we eat out very rarely. We choose to spend our eating out money more on traveling, but we eat out maybe once or twice a month. And for a family of three in Los Angeles, a meal with tip included comes out to, you know, about $70. And that, I mean, that's not at a fancy place. That's just at a nice place. And if you run the numbers, you see, I mean, a single meal for $70 versus what, the rest of the meals of the month, 89, 88 (laughs) meals for $800? I mean, it's like 900% difference. I think a lot of people are hemorrhaging money eating out and not even realizing it. For me to eat out, the food needs to be better than what I can make at home. And that's a pretty high bar to set. And then in terms of happiness, you know, there are a few things as wonderful as eating a home-cooked meal with people that you love. I guess that's why Thanksgiving dinner ranks so high for so many people in terms of their favorite holiday of the year. And the other reason, the scientific reason why cooking from scratch is so fun is because it's the only G-rated activity that I can think of that stimulates all of your senses. And there have been so many studies shown that the more of your brain that you stimulate, the more enjoy, uh, the more enjoyable an activity is and the more that you remember and learn of an activity. And so I'm really excited. I've been teaching these cooking classes, public classes, and also private classes in people's homes for a long time now. And I'm excited to bring these classes to a web format, an online format, because I've had people who've asked me, when am I going to do something that they can participate in because they don't live in Los Angeles? 
So here we go. And my first webinar is a free introduction to my style of cooking. And I also give you a the four tools that you need to cook almost anything. These are tools that everyone probably has in their kitchen, so I'm not asking you to do anything fancy. And in fact, I'm keeping it so simple that I'm not even doing the webinar in my kitchen. That's right. I actually set up a little space on a table just to prove to people how easy it is to cook healthy, delicious food easily. And to sign up for my free webinar, go to smarturl.it slash cookwithallegra. That is smarturl.it, S-M-A-R-T-U-R-L.it slash cookwithallegra, C-O-O-K-W-I-T-H-A-L-E-G-R-E, all one word. So sign up there for my free webinar that's going up on Wednesday. And you can find out more information. There's pre-sale available for the other three webinars that will be going up in the next few months. And if you're interested in all my webinars, then I recommend that you buy the full class, which is an overview of many, many dishes. Because if you buy that in pre-sale right now, then you will get the other classes as my gift to you, which is $105 value. You save about 25%. And I'm also doing a special thing where I'm doing a one-for-one. -one. So for every person who purchases my webinar, Webinar, I will gift a webinar to a student who is enrolled in community college classes or students who are at uh, full four-year universities, etc., who are on financial aid because I just really believe that cooking from scratch is one of the best ways to improve a person and a family's life and health and that it's kind of a lost art in our world and it's something that needs to be re-embraced. So I'm excited to be sharing those with you. Again, smarturl.it slash cookwithallegra. And thanks for tuning in today. If you thought my show was fun or useful, please let me know by sending me a tip through Patreon at patreon.com slash Allegra Ramos. I have great thank you gifts there for my supporters and look forward to when I have 500 patrons and can hire an editor to provide you with more great content that is hopefully even better produced. And I'll see you next week for your weekly dose of modern life, healthier, easier, more fun. We'll be talking to my friend Darius Lux, who is an amazing musician. And the show is going to be all about creativity. And it's a wonderful interview. I'm super excited to share it with you all. I think you all love it. So I'll see you next week. Subscri subscribe to my podcast on iTunes. Let me know what you think on iTunes by dropping me a message. Or if you'd like to submit questions, you can email me at hello at allegraramos.com. You can also download the free Anchor FM app and call into my show so I can play your question on the air. Until next time, be a spark in the world. Over now. out.